apart from that, uh, moving on, I won't talk about Sober October. So Sober October, obviously, for me, is a great time because, like I said, it's a far better time for me to kind of realign myself than um, dry January because I usually do that anyway without even thinking about it. But Sober October is sort of the thing that kind of interrupts your kind of going out schedule, especially now that we've kind of been able to kind of be out for the last, what, six months, it feels like, to then have a sober, to then have a sober month that you kind of have to just put the drink down put down the spoons and the, and the keys and whatnot and just chill it's a good thing because it allows you to kind of center yourself get yourself realigned and it also is a weird way in general if you want to kind of remind yourself of how not dependent you are on the things that you kind of do when you go outdoors in a total to have fun and for me personally being a bit of a night owl and liking you know liking dance music and loving that whole scene and community and traveling the world to go to different clubs it can sometimes be a little bit confusing as to why you're going out are you going out to be seen are you going out to hook up are you going out to get mashed up are you going out to just whatever to escape your reality whatever it may be but usually when it comes down to the core of it i just enjoy legitimately enjoy being around strangers and just dancing to loud you know electronic music that's basically it being able to just like flare your arms and just go absolutely crazy the momentum of everybody like i kind of find it i kind of relate it similar to like going to like your first crossfit classes right they can be a bit wanky but the reason why crossfit classes work is because everybody around you kind of pushes you to kind of do more than you'd probably do if you're doing uh wood on your own and i've done them right i do i do kind of workouts a day on my own at my local gym i'm just going to crossfit.com and copy the workout and it's you know it's pretty baked that the intensity that i have in a in a kind of group will be different than the intensity that i have doing on my own in a mirror somewhere same thing goes for rave the amount of time i'm going to be able to spend on the dance floor without going to a toilet which is what i kind of do in terms of records i try and set myself little targets about okay i'm going to try and stay on this dance floor until like an, two hours and just like dance my face off before i go to a toilet before i go to a bar or whatever right and usually you're only able to do that or even push off to maybe two three hours four hours because a guy next to you is absolutely going off his face right i mean he's absolutely feeling everything you're hugging you're high-fiving it absolutely feels amazing right so that's usually what i love about all that kind of thing but again it can get a bit you know you can lose yourself in the source as um gucci man once famously said and it's good to kind of realign yourself and in general i like to have the balance i like to have the structure and the kind of routine of doing certain things Monday to Friday. And then, of course, going out and playing and kind of playing hard when I need to on the weekend, if need be. So work hard, play hard, that kind of thing. And one of the things that I work hard on, something I've kind of loved to do over the years was reading. And I've been, you know, something I've been fortunate to kind of have in terms of um, an intrinsic desire to read. I've always kind of been a big reader. Even when I was little, I'd always read comic books and encyclopedias and all this sort of stuff and Guinness Book Records and stuff, right? I'd be spending my time in the library, you know, just hanging around, reading shit, sometimes nicking books, you know, the usual stuff, right? Um, so it's, it, I was quite fortunate, even though I was a bad student when I kind of, you know, got a bit older and went into secondary school and college and uni, I wasn't the best student. I kind of, you know, took a, I kind of took liberties because I was, it, things came easy to me i still kept hold of the kind of um the desire to read and over the last few years i was kind of known for reading like set myself targets of reading like three books sometimes four or five books per month and a lot of people will be like oh my god man that's so that's extreme that's amazing how do you do that and it usually isn't anything that incredible really in my experience or from my point of view because what i did is i set myself these tiny targets of like making sure that i read an hour per day and when I was working in a normal office job commuting to work, it would made it really easy to kind of get through loads of books because think about it. If I'm setting myself a target of reading an hour per day, that means that's an hour that, that doesn't include my commute. It's just an hour. I have to kind of total up some way, shape or form. Then you add in my commute because usually if, it, if it's a sober October or it, yeah, it's a sober October month. If it's a sober October month, then usually I'm, I've committed to like spending less time on my phone. So that kind of is out of the equation. So I'm spending an hour a day reading. I'm spending the time that I'll be commuting reading, the time I'll be waiting for the train reading, the time I'm waiting for the bus reading. Every time that I'll be on my phone, I'm spending it with a book. So that could easily add up to about two and a half, an hour and a half per day. So you times that, you know, throughout the entire week or entire month, and you could quite easily get through those books in a very, very quick time. Especially if you're reading a book that you really enjoy, you end up speeding through a book and trying to finish it as fast as you can so you can find out what the ending's like, innit? So that's what usually happened to me. So I could really get through loads of those books really, really quickly in those kind of four, five and a half, or five, four, you know, four and a half weeks, whatever it may be, that happened in a month. So that's what I'm going to do now for Sub October. I've set myself a target of reading these books here that I recently purchased from Amazon. If you can see them there, can you see those books there? Hopefully you can. Yep. Those books there that I purchased from Amazon. If you can see my face, I'll put them for the thumbnail. Uh, but yeah, so 
Book number one that I've got reading through Sub October is um, Stephen Fry's book, Troy, Our Greatest Story Ever Told. He's got a couple of others based on, um, you know, uh, ancient Greece and mythologies and stuff. So I'm going to be enjoying this one to get through. I think I've got Mythos and Heroes actually somewhere. I've got Catherine Belton's uh, Putin's People, How the KGB Took Back Russia and Then Took the On the West. So I'm going to be reading that too. I'm going to enjoy that. I've got this, Taolin, uh, Leave Society, a novel which I think I saw being given out at some fashion show in New York. I forgot which one it was. Um, there was a fashion show outdoors somewhere and they left all these on the chair. I just kind of saw it on Instagram and thought, you know what, let me grab it. I have no idea what this book's about, but I thought, let me grab it and see what the vibe is. Um, so let's see if fashion people actually read good books of his shit. Then I've got another book here called 4,000 Weeks, Time and How to Use It by Oliver Berkman. So that's going to be an interesting one to read as well in terms of how to utilize your time and all that good stuff. And then the last one, I've got a book called Dead Mountain, um, an untold true story of um, Di 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 Love Past Incident by Donnie Eicher. The reason why I got this is because there's a TV series out at the moment, a foreign language one. I think it's Russian made as well, uh, called Dead Mountain. Basically, you know, uh, a TV series about this book. So I went to basically read the book first to see what the vibe is before I watch the series, just to kind of, you know, get an idea of what I'm reading or what I'm watching, actually. And, I, and I'm a big fan of kind of, you know, getting at the source material. Now, there was the opportunity that I may not finish every single one. But the good thing about Serb October is that just by committing to reading an hour per day and spending less time on my phone and on the internet and doing other destructive things it's going to kind of recenter me it's going to obviously open my mind so it's going to allow me to learn new things improve my vocabulary maybe make me less anxious and in general help me to just kind of sort out and figure out my thoughts so that's what usually happens with books you read a book you you don't really agree with the premise you start to kind of argue with the with the writer in your head you start to you kind of it starts it kind of sharpens your arguments it kind of makes you question your positions all those kind of good stuff i'm going to end up doing as i'm reading this book so i'm really really um and i'm really really anxious to kind of get started i've already started in a couple so it's going to be a great time to kind of be powering through these books throughout the majority of this month during Serb october that's basically what i'm doing man i'm mostly going to be doing that and of course training running and shit i've got a list somewhere i've got to show anyway i'll show it later of what i'm actually doing for the Serb october but yeah i'm looking forward to it man i'm looking forward to 